about time based invalidation this is similar to the time based cash expiration in a sense that in this case as well we use a time to live property ttl so for each entry we set a ttl and whenever the ttl of that entry expires we consider that entry as invalid and because the entry has now been invalidated a fresh value of that entry will be fetched from the data source whether it is the database or an external api so in this approach the entries are invalidated based on the ttl property based on the time same as time based expiration time based invalidation is good for scenarios where the data updates are slightly predictable but slightly stale information is also acceptable because if the actual data gets updated before the ttl expires in that case cache will keep returning the same data which is the old data because for the caching layer the ttl of that entry is still valid so overall this policy is useful for scenarios where data updates are slightly predictable and a stale data is acceptable moving on the next invalidation type is event based in event based cache invalidation the entries are invalidated based on the events or notifications in this approach the caching layer listens to certain events and whenever a relevant event occurs the cache will invalidate or update the entries depending on the nature of that event consider we are building a cache for the stock prices now the thing is we don't own the stock prices so even though we are building the cache at time t of those prices we want those prices to be up to date since we don't own the stock prices how do we know if the price has changed how do we know the price in the cache is still valid so in such scenarios where we don't own the data set where we don't own the updates or where we don't know the timing of those updates in those cases we can use events so in this example we will listen to the price events and whenever let's say for a security a price gets changed we will receive an event and based on that event we can update the cache we can update the prices of that security in the cache we can invalidate those prices so that can happen based on the events that we receive the last category to cover is write through and write behind both of these approaches are useful for the scenarios where consistency between the cache and the data source is very important in the write through approach the change goes through the cache hence the name write through so whenever there is a change in the data set we always update the cache and the data source simultaneously you can say virtually in the same transaction by doing so we always ensure that the cache and the data source remain consistent and synchronized with each other and because we update the cache and the data source simultaneously it also means that technically we are invalidating the cache at the same time that means the cache will always return the up to date data so there is no room for the staleness in this case so in this approach although we solve the problem of the consistency between the cache and the data source but a write operation is only considered successful when the cache and the data source both are updated so for instance let's say we updated the cache successfully but the operation to update the data source failed for some reason then this write operation will not be considered a successful operation in the write behind approach we always update the cache first so that means cache remains up to date and cache will always return the up to date data so while the cache always remains up to date the data source may take some time to get updated there could be a time difference a lag between the cache and the database write behind approach differs from the write through in the sense that in this case the write will consider successful as soon as the cache is updated so it will not wait for the data source to be updated because the data source will be updated asynchronously so the write behind approach is really useful for the low latency write scenarios where we don't wait for the data source to be updated so we reduce the latency so in this video we discuss different strategies for cache invalidation and each approach has its own use case its benefits and challenges overall cache invalidation is very useful to manage the consistency between the cache and the underlying data source but it also comes with the challenges if we are not careful with the cache invalidation policies then it may result into over invalidating the entries and unnecessary data reads from the original data source so we need to be careful here with the approaches or whatever strategy we select ultimately whatever we select depends on the requirement and the use case and the nature of the application so that's it for this video see you in the next video